Yes. Hello. Let's see. Hmm. Put no these notes aside now, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. We are uh, gathered here uh, for, uh, hello dear, <laughs> for the second session of Winter Retreat 2012. And uh, we have been uh, so fortunate that uh, the weather has been mild mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. perfect weather for doing Cora on the new uh, Cora path around the pond at, uh, over at Norbu. And uh, we have had uh, wonderful uh, discussions and meditations on loving kindness meditation this past week on Metta. And, uh, uh, so we are, you, those of you who have just arrived are very fortunate because we have been practicing kindness. <laughs> and we will, we will practice on you. <laughs> and if you are kind, that will be appreciated. But if you are not kind, we will still be kind, won't we? Yes, like we that. <laughs> so <laughs> we are... Uh, beginning uh, 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 from the uh, uh, Sutric Mahayana Theravadan, I'm going to say Theravadan uh, medit type meditations that are uh, very specifically done with Mahayana motivation, uh, makes them Mahayana practices. And uh, from these uh, from the metta uh, practices that we are now uh, embarking on a uh, week of exploration of the uh, tantras, uh, specifically uh, understanding the nature of green Tara. And so although, although uh, the uh, subject of our retreat is uh, 21, the 21 Taras, isn't it? Mm -hmm. huh? That uh, my secret agenda is to help you, uh, to establish you in a more skillful uh, understanding of the nature of green Tara. And so we have, uh, uh, during this time, we have, uh, uh, certain uh, goals, certain goals. So I'm going to, that's one of the goals, is for you to understand better the nature, the vast nature of green Tara. Uh, because it isn't like, here's, here's green Tara and here are the 21 Taras. No, it's not like that. That these are the aspects of green Tara. And uh, in that way, we are uh, learning and practicing green Tara in a new way. Okay, number one. Number two, that uh, you will uh, each do your very best to memorize the praises of the uh, the praises of the twenty-one Taras while you're here. And so there's going to be a lot of time that you are going to need uh, in your uh, private time for just doing uh, memorization. Now, I am not, if you're not good at memorizing, then I am going to give you special understanding. But I think each of you is a lot better at memorization than you think you are. Mm 
okay? It's not like, oh, I'm not really good at memorization, so I think I won't do this, okay? Or other people are better at memorization, so they'll, they'll always be better than I am. Why should I try so hard? Okay, I hear all of your excuses. <laughs> As soon as, I, as soon as I finish memorizing it, I know that I'm that kind of person that I forget that as soon as, I, as soon as I remember it and then I forget it again. This is not an excuse. This is not a good excuse. That uh, you're going to have to exercise. Have I been hard on you for memorization? No. Not at all. Okay. And so this winter retreat, I am introducing you to the, uh, what you call, discipline. Which, see, I don't even know that word. <laughs> that discipline of memorization. I'm listening. What do you have to say? Um, the the Chidamani Tara retreat, you asked us to memorize them. And yes. you mentioned how it was easier to memorize when you're here in the Pure Land. That's right. And uh, how many people were able to memorize a bit? Did you memorize the whole thing? Okay, so okay, so for those that, for for you, it's going to be a lot easier to memorize it all over again because I have a feeling that you don't that you don't have it uh, handy, but it'll it'll go faster this time. Okay, and so uh, the uh, Chittamani, This is not a Chittamani Taro retreat. That uh, uh, this is uh, Green Tara aspected in 21 forms retreat. Tomorrow at the empowerment, you will receive, <laughs> you will receive the, uh, the copy of the 21 Taras. Uh, and uh, uh, this one, this is a little bit different translation, uh, but it's one that can be sung. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, it's easier to uh, to memorize things if it goes according to a tune. So there's going to be a great deal of attention paid on this, uh, on this uh, learning the chant, and the tune is quite simple, like that. Yes? One of always informed me that it's a different... I've memorized what we did yes. the first time, and, and it's going to be different than what I've yes. Yes, I, I, I realize that, and uh, I do love this other, this other form. And uh, so it's okay if you have, two, if you have two, different, two different ones there. You can do it. You want me to memorize the new one. The new one because it's in accordance with the tune. Okay, so this okay. This okay. <laughs> you know, if we, if, we were, uh, if we were singing it in Tibetan, of course, it, that Tibetan not change like that, but we're not doing it Tibetan, so we're at the mercy of, of translations, and uh, it was a hard decision, but I did it. Anyway, so, okay. I want us to take this time. Uh, <clears throat> I want us to take this time uh, to meditate. So if you can set your papers aside. Yeah.
Please open your eyes. There's a great deal of uh, misunderstanding about uh, Green Tara and the practice of Green Tara. That um, uh, in the Orient, in the Orient, that uh, Green Tara uh, was very popular and very approachable in the same kind of way that uh, the Virgin Mary uh, is in Catholicism, I think. Huh? That uh, as a kind of benevolent, maternal uh, deity that is uh, approachable and uh, uh, saving from any problems like that. <laughs> Maybe sort of like Santa Claus, huh? Like that. Whatever it is that you want, you just ask Green Tara. Huh? That um, her uh, folk, I'm going to say the folk uh, religion of Green Tara, 
perhaps was uh, encouraged by the uh, lamas and uh, religious uh, practices uh, because it was uh, a huge uh, aspect of the faith that uh, people, for example, in Tibet had. That uh, to uh, talk about the higher valuations or the more abstract nature of Green Tara might have damaged their faith in the approachability uh, that they have of Green Tara. And I truly believe that uh, many of the uh, Rinpoches and many of the Lamas and the teaching Lamas and the Geshes, because they grew up in this environment, that not very many of them had a clear uh, practice or understanding of Green Tara. That uh, influenced by their childhood faith and uh, their village uh, uh, prayers to Green Tara, that it was just easier. <laughs> it was easier to have this <coughs> maternal view and uh, uh, approachable uh, view. And uh, uh, some, uh, such as uh, Great Atisha, had another very important view of Green Tara. That uh, his relationship with Green Tara was uh, beyond a simple faith and beyond the view of uh, uh, belonging to me as my mother. And uh, so I believe that uh, men, many of the lamas who have come uh, to America, or to the West, I'm going to say, and have disseminated the practice of Green Tara, have uh, done so in order to arouse the same kind of faith uh, that uh, the simple Tibetans had in their uh, village uh, practices. Hmm? that uh, this kind of uh, faith came to a, a country that was emerging, kind of emerging feminism spirituality. <laughs> and when emerging feminism spirituality meets uh, Eastern faith, like that. What did we get? We got a bunch of goddesses that it, that it folded very nicely into goddess worship. When I lived in California, that uh, uh, many people still that are very interested in feeling the spirituality of the uh, goddess energy. That's a very important. This is nowhere near the faith of, of Green Tara, but somehow Green Tara just like uh, got sucked into this, <laughs> into this entire atmosphere where she became uh, very excited, people very excited about Green Tara because they finally recognize the name for their goddess energy. And I'm looking right at you, you electrical being. She just got a shock, a very bad shock. <laughs> so I'll call you my electrical being. Are you feeling, o are you feeling okay? Yeah, Poor feeling. thing, sorry. Am I speaking truly? Sure. All right, because she lived in California for a long time. So this, uh, this uh, uh, is not easy. It's not easy to extricate 
extricate <laughs> Green Tara from from the from the goddesses, like that. And uh, the entire process of the goddess uh, cult, I'm going to say, uh, maybe I've read the wrong name, but anyway, this goddess stuff <laughs> is that. Um, uh, the goddess, which is, and this is for ladies, okay, sorry you guys, but that, uh, that, that you have this potential sensual, uh, graceful, uh, delightful, uh, wise, and energetic, and uh, exquisitely wisdom feeling quality which has been hidden inside you. And that what you need to do is you need to emerge uh, this goddess within you. Am I, am I s stating it correctly? Like a lot of ways we call it like the divine feminine quality that needs to be born in this time. Yes, okay. It, it is true, mm -hmm. Sonam? Okay. And so, I haven't really spoken about it that much, but uh, my mouth kind of like, huh? <laughs> when, uh, when this people's so happy to receive Green Tara initiation, because they know that that means that it will, that it will affirm their own identity, their own emerging quality of goddessness. And uh, this kind of, their, their capacity uh, for sensuality, and this is the part which is where it gets very iffy, that their capacity for sensuality will be increased. But now it's done in a spiritual way rather than grasping, okay? So it's like a, they consider it to be a transformation of their own uh, energies into uh, more spiritualized energies, okay? That this was never done in Tibet. It was never, never, never. It was never done in India. This is a, this is a, a new, this is a new kind of thinking. And uh, I have a feeling that many uh, Tibetan lamas either are overlooking it as they overlook the faith aspect of the mother. Like this is, this is my mother Tara and like this, that they don't want to tell them no, don't have faith in. And I think they're telling the goddess, the goddess people, they don't want to, they don't want to tell them, don't do that, okay? So I think that we know each other well enough here so that I can say, don't do that. Don't do that. It's not correct. And it is a, it is a form of spiritualized sensuality that I don't think is, I don't think is good for you. I don't think it's good for you. I don't think it's healthy. I think it makes you more worldly. That it brings, it's a kind of worldly spirituality that is part of the feel-good type of spirituality okay and so uh, this is what I want to say to you uh, at the beginning of our of our time here this week that the uh, uh, the green Tara is a powerful is a powerful Buddha is a powerful Buddha if we, if we have too strong feelings that uh, Green Tara is, uh, is my mother, Green Tara is, uh, uh, is a, uh, a goddess who I can emulate like that, that you're not going to get the point here this week, which is focusing on the powerful aspect of Green Tara, okay? And uh, uh, in that way, that I have given, I have given initiation 
uh, of Mother Green Tara. Many of you have been present at those initiations where I specifically, I specifically uh, taught on the aspect of Green Tara as our extraordinarily kind mother. And the kindness which uh, Green Tara possesses is the epitome of the kindness which we have been talking about this past week the accomplished kindness that nature as being kind. And so Mother Green Tara is kind, helpful, what else? Gentle, what? Cheerful, Nobody is. Helpful, huh? Cheerful, helpful, cheerful, helpful, yes. Helpful, helpful, helpful accommodating, courteous, courteous, courteous friendly, friendly, respectful of others. Convenient. Huh? Never, never inconvenienced, never inconvenienced. Non this all, huh? Non -violent. non violent, optimistic. That uh, when we think about, when we think about the fully accomplished state of kindness, that uh, the enlightened qualities of kindness uh, are fully present in, uh, in all of the Buddhas, in all of the Buddhas but exemplified uh, very strongly in the practice of Green Tara. This is a very healing for us. I am not disrespecting my teachings on Mother Green Tara because this is important for us to have that, to have that aspect in order to feel safe and in order to feel, to experience that kind of love, okay? And uh, I can't, uh, this, this somewhat touches on the, on the way uh, Green Tara is seen in the Orient, but as I said, it's kind of almost a folk religious, she's almost like a folk religious figure. And so quite strong common denominator that the that it, not too much has to be known about it green tar is your mother and just have faith and like that okay and uh, in that way uh, mother green tara became a kind of benchmark of superior being uh, that uh, was uh, very often, uh, very often appeared uh, as the, or emanated as the mothers of the High Lamas. My own precious mother in the, my life as the eighth, uh, my mother's name was Dolma, but she very Dolma. I never saw her as anything other than Dolma. And so it wasn't easy for me to experience the powerful aspect of Green Tara while, while my heart and love for my mother, who passed away when I was very, very young, uh, was so strongly associated with Green Tara. And so my understandings, my understandings, uh, of the uh, tremendous uh, power of green Tara is what I want to, I want us to uh, gain uh, respect and realizations this week. And in that way, there are many, many different forms of Tara, such as white Tara, red Tara, and other forms of Tara, such as Prajnaparamita, is an aspect of Tara. Uh, Nangyalma, Nangyalma, the long life deity, is an aspect of Tara, and so on. And uh, Tara appears in the mandalas of probably all, 
probably all uh, tantric uh, uh, mandala uh, entourage. And uh, in the uh, five Dayani Buddhas, that she is a consort of one of the five Dayani Buddhas. That uh, she uh, permeates uh, all levels of tantric environment in one form or another. That uh, she is probably all, I not say everyone, but I'm thinking quite a lot, okay. And uh, uh, her practice, uh, who's I about to say? Her, uh, her practice has very easily uh, permeated Western Tibetan Buddhist culture. That there is no, not even one, a uh, person practicing Tibetan Buddhism for more than a year that never heard the name of Green Tara. That uh, uh, we have been uh, suffused uh, with the uh, help of Green Tara uh, simply by being in uh, new a Buddhist location because uh, Green Tara is about beginnings and so the dissemination of Buddhism to the West has been facilitated by a Green Tara for many decades and uh, is a, a vital part of the um, energizing, the energizing of Buddhism in the West. And so whether you know it or not, that you are receiving the blessings of Green Tara uh, when you come to uh, Tibetan Buddhism. Many people say, I'm not, I'm only interested in emptiness. Other people will say, I'm only interested in Chenrezy. I don't want to know anything about uh, deities. I only want to know about uh, compassion. Or some people only interested in this or that, some aspect. They only want to, they only want to uh, get to better rebirth like that. Each and every one of them uh, has uh, been the beneficiary of the blessings of Green Tara. Anyone who has gone to an authentic uh, Lama uh, and received teachings, no matter what the subject of those teachings, that that Lama, that authentic Lama is infused with the power of the dissemination of the Dharma and is being actively helped by Green Tara. So, even you not have the initiation of Green Tara before, that you already are experiencing, you're already experiencing the blessings of Green Tara. That uh, the, uh, uh, yes. And so the complexity, the complexity of how Green Tara helps and the complexity of the vast assistance in the removal of the obstacles to the enlightened state is uh, personified, is personified and explained uh, by the uh, 21 Taras. You know, when I was in um, when I was in uh, California, uh, this, was I in California? When was I in California? Recently, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> November. 
November. Oh, it's <laughs> quite recent. And uh, a group of ladies who have been studying this uh, Tara dance. Uh, performed. Those people who are listening on the, on the conference line, of course, couldn't see the dance, but they could hear the chanting and, the, and like that. And uh, so this is actually very popular. It's actually very goddess, too, but OK. <laughs> and uh, this uh, very lovely dancing, very lovely dancing and the movements, and they were very careful in their chanting, etc. And uh, so I was, uh, while I was watching them, in my mind, in my mind, I was moved by another vision in other places and other ways that, uh, that they were the example, that they were the example of, uh, actually, they're, they're not doing Tara dance. They're not doing 21 Tara. They're actually doing offering goddess dances. So, but it sounds better to say it's Tara, but actually it's not. So the offering goddesses uh, dance that they were doing, yes, uh, made me, uh, uh, caused me to uh, perceive uh, the offering goddesses of my tradition like that. And it was lovely. It was lovely. And uh, so these, uh, uh, yeah. I'd actually, I didn't even put it into words myself until just now. When I, I mean, of course, that's what they are. But uh, they were so happy. They were so happy to be, uh, you know, doing this. And they're teaching it as the, the, the 16 emptinesses or the 21 Taras or something like that. And uh, uh, I enjoyed it tremendously. And they had good motivation, etc. And these, uh, uh, where was I going on this? Nope, I don't see where I was going. Yes. Sometimes if you look around, you can like see where you, huh? You. What's that? There's a group of, tw of the 21 tired ladies that would like to dance for you. Where? In North Carolina. Oh, good. I'd be happy to. Don't, don't, don't tell them. Don't tell them. I, I'm happy to watch them dance. Yes. How many are there? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. And uh, when I was in Hawaii, that uh, a group of... Um, uh, Hawaiian uh, ladies who were, uh, who had been studying uh, hula, hulu, uh, excuse me, uh, hula uh, for a very long time, and kumu hula, the, uh, the hula master, uh, did uh, did the dance, and uh, to me I was I was delighted. It was it it produces a very nice atmosphere like that, and uh, so don't don't discourage them. Like that. Begin now uh, in uh, thinking about uh, learning, uh, learning about the green Tara in a new method, in a new way. And uh, uh, it's not even, it, it's more it's more Mahayana uh, than, you, than you might be thinking. That uh, when I gave you the teachings of Chittamanitara, that this was done in the method of the transformative method of the highest yoga tantras. That I want you to see this as being a, uh, as being a Mahayana transformative practice uh, that is more about bodhicitta, and uh, I will be giving you the visualizations uh, as you're as you're doing the uh, recitations like that. So uh, these are the things that I that I wanted you to uh, to understand. Uh, and tomorrow is an initiation of Green Tara with the specific. Uh, uh, motivation of uh, presenting a, uh, a view of Green Tara as uh, in as her as the central figure of the aspects of uh, 21 Taras.
Mahayana great beings, tantric deities, uh, but not limited to the tantric environment. Hmm. Like that. <laughs> so, any questions or anything you want to say? Give a dinner to Dr. Sangitu Kinito, take him out of Pagi, Salakupa, sure.